Hello everybody, I'm Steve and welcome to Green Side Up. Um, down on the allotment today, as you can probably see, the tunnel behind me there. And I'm just going to walk down this path. There's something I want to show you. Um, I'll cut now, just so I don't get you dizzy spinning you around. Okay, this is dug over soil in here. And just for a sense of scale, here's the edge of my bed, the scaffold boards. And here's the soil. And it's been frosted, frozen, defrosted, refrozen. But this is the action that causes your soil to break apart in the frost and why the old fashioned gardeners, the older gaffers, will all say to dig your soil over before winter, the frost will sort it out. As something freezes, it pushes the moisture out and when it defrosts, it draws it back in. I know that from my catering days. But this is the action it has on the soil. And it does exactly the same on compost as well. I'll take you over there now. I'll show you the bed. Here's a bed with some elephant garlic in I've got planted. But you can see that telltale sort of holes in the compost. So the troughs and peaks of where the ground has frozen and defrosted. I mean, I see this every year, but I've never seen it so pronounced before. Hence why I wanted to show you it. Uh, it's the same on this next bed. You can even see it from this high up. This is to say it's... I've never seen it so pronounced before, which is brilliant, really. So this is the action the frost has on your soil. And why it's your friend as well. There we go. Okay, this is my... Uh, one of my mustards, the common sooner. You can see now this is going to seed, so I am gonna strip these, take what I can to eat, probably for tea tonight, and um, pull these plants to clear the bed out. Now it's very it cooks up like a spinach this, and what you'll often find is people will cut that off and then they will strip away this leaf and use the leaf. That's what what professional chefs do, if you like. They'll cut away that central midrib. This Komatsune, you can eat all this. Nothing wrong, I just sorted that off for a minute and a half, two minutes maximum, just tossing it in a bit of butter, a bit of nutmeg, and then I shred these leaves, and these go in at the last minute, two tosses of the pan and a serve, and that's ready. And that's delicious. So you can see from that that, you know, there's a good meal to be had so we'll probably get a couple of meals off this I would have thought I mean it'll want sorting through when I get home but that's a job for at home right now I'm just wanting to get this get this clear really Now I had some red giant, which is just where the camera is actually, and it's grown very well, but I just really do not like it. It's too bitter for me. Now, there was a suggestion, somebody said try it in a particular curry dish. I didn't do that, but I did try it with some herbs and spice, well, all spices actually. I used some coriander, some cinnamon, I thought the cinnamon would, would mellow it. Coriander's quite a strong flavour, as is the cumin I use with it. And I also put a bit of heat with it, with some cayenne. And I thought that would sort it out. It didn't, that bitterness still came through. So I've ripped all that red giant out. It's a, it's a shame really, because it grows so well. And it hasn't, Hardly been affected by the frost at all. Just slightly flattened it, but apart from that, it was really good, good grower, good winter grower. So I shan't be growing that again, but this coming sooner, I'll definitely grow again. So this is where the red giant was, and that's gone. And the coming sooner was here where I've just picked that out and I've just been raking it over and tidying it out. So we're all tidy, we've got three beds empty, ready to go. We've got carrots in this bed up here. 
and some chard over in the corner. That should kick off really nicely when the weather starts to warm up. Big pile of rubbish and timbers to sort out here. All the Chinese cabbage has come out over there. It's a shame that because it wasn't that far from sort of bunching up. It's uh, done better than I've ever had it before. Try again next year. I've got a plan for next year. Uh, a few brassicas here, savoy cabbages and some broccoli. Again, not as good as they have been. And more clear bed space here. This is where the Romanescu cauliflowers were. They were starting to rot off. So they've come out and that ground's cleared. Still got some beetroot leaves to eat there. And there's the remaining amaze lettuce here. I've got other edibles in the tunnel, the other tunnel and outside. <laughs> I've got a little bit of footage that I filmed yesterday afternoon. Uh, I'll run that now. I sowed this tray of flower seeds uh, a couple of days ago now and somebody rightfully commented in the comments to it. I think it was Connor and Neil. They both suggested why, why didn't I sow directly into modules and then from there pot on or use as needed. Now the reason I've done this is to save space which is why I came up with this furrow idea and then put in the the label sticks if you like at various spaces along it. It means I can sow lot, an, an awful lot of seeds in a very short or very small space and if I'd actually put them into modules here is what I would have needed to sow them into. Now, as you can see, this is an eight foot greenhouse. There's the far end. There's the, yeah, there's some junk to move down there. And I could get all these on this bench. And here's where the flower seeds are now with my little potting tray. But this is not the end of the story because the plants I expect to get from that flower tray that I have sown will also fill all of these down here. Now, will you bear in mind that some of these flower seeds may not germinate for three, four or even five weeks or more. It takes up too much space in my growing schedule every year. <clears throat> so I developed this, not developed it, you know, I, I don't claim to own in this method. I, I made this up for myself as a way to get the seeds done as I need to do. Now, I may get one or two varieties germinating here and I can pot them on into these module trays, put them back on the heat or leave them in here for a little while, let them grow on and take them down the polytunnel, all the while just leaving this one tray in the greenhouse so it's not taking up space. Now over the next two or three weeks I will be sowing lots of module trays with multi sown vegetables in and they will take up a lot of space in here. So you can see with all those flower seeds in these module trays Put on with vegetables, I just do not have the space to do that. So this is why I do this. And this is just the first tray. It's just my initial starter to get me going if we have a good spring so that I've got early plants that I can get straight in. There's at least another three or four of these to come yet. And I'll also be sowing in other ways, other ways. for example, me, my sweet peas. That will be a tray this size or bigger, normally a mushroom tray full. Um, and there's all my sunflowers as well, which they need to go into bigger pots. You know, so it's my way to get everything done that I need to do uh, to get the plants that I need to grow to fill my allotment space up. And that's why I've sown it in this way. It's not always easy for me to relay the facts of why I'm doing something, but I'm going to make a bigger effort and make, uh, make more of an explanation of things as I go along so that it's more understandable for people. I never thought of that. So I do owe Connor and Neil and the rest of you an apology for that. And hopefully you can understand and see why uh, I need to do it this way. So there we go, sermon over. <laughs> so I hope, I hope that makes um, sense there. I try to save as much space as I can. Uh, next year, I'll hopefully have an added greenhouse onto the end of the greenhouse at home, making it 16 foot long as opposed to eight foot long. Uh, that will give me a bit more space and then I can perhaps return to the better way of doing things with, with you know, growing straight into modules. I'd like to do that, but I'm sort of restricted with space and I have to make do with what I've got and use it to the best that I can. So that's why I do what I've done there with those plants. I mean, you'll see me over 
the next month or so, sowing lots of stuff into modules. And basically most of that was multi sown veg. Uh, so I do use the modules and you do use the two methods and chop and change. And every year I do something a little bit different, but you'll see that as I go along anyway. But that's it for now. Look after yourselves everyone and I'll see you in a day or two. Take care, Toronto. Ha, ha, ha.